Uh, nearly 40 years after HMS Pinafore, a once-in-a-generation cultural phenomenon changed the landscape of New York City. It reached unbridled success after it exploded onto the American stage. That show was Shuffle Along. And yes. And it was orchestra leader James Reese Europe's dream of creating a black Broadway musical. Helping to bring that dream to fruition was composer UB Blake, lyricist Noble Sissel, and book writers Flournoy Miller and Aubrey Lyles. To honor those men and this miraculous show, please welcome to the stage from the 2016 revival of Shuffle Along, our bender, Jay Robinson. Hello, hello, hello. Good afternoon, evening, whatever it is. Uh, confession, I just stepped off the stage. I'm in the Book of Mormon right now. We have a seven o'clock show, which literally just ended at 9.30. Uh, so uh, I am at that stage of the evening where uh, my body is coming down from the show. So if I break out in a cold sweat, you understand what just happened. It's my body saying, oh, the show in the week is finally over. So I'm here. Uh, so thanks for beginning your weekend, my weekend tonight. Uh, great, great. So, uh, so Shuffle Along, yeah. Um, Shuffle Along was this one Wonderful, wonderful show. Uh, I, I'm super proud of it. Uh, uh, George C. Wolfe uh, decided to uh, do two things. One, give a number of actors an experience in commercial theater that we'll probably never have again, where we all came together for a course of about three years did a ton of research and kind of created this theatrical uh, evening that became the revival of Shuffle Along. Part of it was clips from the show, and then part of it really was telling the story of those wonderful creators that created the show, and then let the world know what happened to them after the success of Shuffle Along. So it was kind of Shuffle Along, the great musical of 1921, and all the things that followed for so long after. It was a super, super long title. So, uh, so we were able to do that. The other thing that was really great uh, is that we were able to resurrect the names of these people, resurrect these artists who really uh, paved the way for me to have this opportunity tonight, paved the way for many audiences to see so many great shows and so many great artists of, colors, uh, of color on the Broadway stage. So one thing that we did throughout the entire process of Shuffle Along is, is we paid tribute to those artists. So we began part of our rehearsal process at the Belasco Theater because it's like kind of haunted. Uh, and it is. And, and George, uh, during our haunted rehearsal process, uh, wrote this little monologue that falls into the show. And throughout the show, there are all these monologues that have uh, different stories behind them as to why they existed. So the first monologue I'm going to do for you today, uh, we wrote at the Belasco Theater because it's haunted. And we really wanted to resurrect the names and the images and the culture and the lives of these artists that came before us. So we're going to do a little toast. And it goes like this. To the ghosts of all who have come before. Anyone who has ever sang a note or danced a routine, we can feel it in the wings, in the rafters, in the handrails on the stage. And we carry your energy with us every time we set foot on stage. We feel the hope and your loss pushing us to give all we've got. And tomorrow, everything can change or go back to the way that it was <laughs> or worse. But for tonight, one night out of so many where we dare not to, we believe. So this is 54 Below, so I'm sure all of you have a drink in front of you. <laughs> so I want you all to raise your drinks. And I want you to say, to you, those who have come before. Let's hear it. To you, those who have come before. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for resurrecting the energy of those artists that created this wonderful piece called Shuffle Along. So Shuffle Along, 1921. What made Shuffle Along so great? Well, let's see. In 1921, uh, first of all, know that by the time the show closed, uh, it had 
grossed about $9 million. So I asked the lady inside my phone today, I think her name is Siri. Uh, she's really nice, she's really smart. She knows like everything. And I said, Siri, 1921, $9 million, what would that be today if we consider inflation and all those kinds of things? And Siri told me, she said, Arbinder Robinson, she didn't say that, I just added that part. <laughs> Arbinder Robinson, it sounds good. That would be, what was it, $150 million this show would have made the equivalent of in 1921. That tells you how wonderful this show was. Not only was it that great, uh, we're used to doing eight shows a week and we do a matinee and a matinee usually happens at you know 2 or 3 p.m. Shuffle Along had to add another matinee. It happened at midnight. Right? Why would a show, why would a cast decide to do a show at midnight? Oh, because every other artist on Broadway wanted to be seen at Shuffle Along. So how could they do that? Well, we'll add another show so you all can come up and see us at 63rd Street. Uh, you all can come up and see us at midnight after your show and this became the place that everyone wanted to be after their show. So Shuffle Along was that popular. Wonderful. That's also how they can make so much money adding extra shows. So there we go. Uh, so, um, so 1921, uh, what made Shuffle Long so great? Another monologue that George put into the show, let's see if I remember it correctly. Effie Miller said this. In 1921, there were many artists of color that wanted to create a musical, but their dreams were suddenly stopped, but ours weren't, luckily. In 1921, if anyone who looked like me decided to what, vote, or have any agency over my own life, I would be brutally beaten or destroyed. But Shuffle Along, a show that takes place in the South, deals with an election <laughs> and voting. And the audience members in the dark and the people on stage in the light knew that what was happening on stage was magic. But if we went outside that door, there would be a world waiting to devour that magic that we created. So on stage, every song, every note, every gesture, every sleight of hand, every forced smile would be delivered with excellence, precision, and defiance. A joyous rage, it was once called. And it was that precision, it was that defiance that forced audiences to come back night after night to see the dreams and the hopes of the things that were created inside of that theater, knowing full well what was happening outside in the street. That is Shuffle Along. That is the legacy that we were forced to uphold eight times a week on stage. That was the dream that George C. Wolfe wanted to give all of us today something we'll never experience on Broadway again. So I had the wonderful uh, uh, joy or experience or fear of covering Billy Porter in the show. Billy, Por Billy Porter played uh, someone named Aubrey Lyles. Uh, and one day we're in rehearsal, we're all sitting on the floor, all of us sat on the floor, George made us all sit on the floor, we were all equals. Audra McDonald, Brian Sox Mitchell, we're all sitting on the floor in the dirt, tap dancing and covered in sweat, and said, hey Billy, I don't know if you're old enough for this, but we're gonna add a song in the show for you and it's a blues song. And Billy said, I'm not old enough to sing the blues. And I'm thinking to myself, <laughs> I cover you and I'm definitely not old enough to sing the blues. But there was a blues song put into the show. So uh, George had to help us out. Uh, how could we get to a place emotionally where we thought we could actually sing the blues? So let's dive into one more moment of Shuffle Along, a show that means so much to me. And it goes something like this. The sophomore Winter Cotillion was the most famed event of the season. So the summer before, I worked hard and I bought myself a, uh, a winter tux with notch lapel, black patent leather oxfords and a silk top hat. <laughs> Only the night of, I realized that everyone had on white gloves. Now, if I showed up at the cotillion without my pair of white gloves, 
everyone would know that my father, he wasn't the famed minstrel promoter that I bragged him to be, but a rough house and a thug. If I showed up without a pair of white gloves, everyone would know that my mother wasn't a music teacher. But Jackson, Tennessee's most reputable whore. reeling and I'm feeling blue my heart is aching about to break in two I feel like a fish without a fin and for the lack of sleep, I'm getting thin. You don't think I'm sinking well. <laughs> Look what a hole I'm in. I got the low down, lowest of the low down. My crown is sinking through my shoes. It's not because I'm broke with all my clothes and pawn, but since that morn I woke and found all my hope gone. With that lonesome news, I got the lowest of the low down. Never told no lie. You see, you never miss the water till the well runs dry. Time to pack my dreams and leave this shore, for there will surely be some creep hanging on my door. And I'm gonna leave this town no more. No more. No more. Low down. Thank you.